This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Fitness has become more and more extreme these days. Gone are the days where simply running on the treadmill was enough to satisfy the urge. It was only a matter of time before we upped the ante on a workout class to a level far too extreme. And in today's story, our narrator will confront that head on. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. Bike or die. Thank you to our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Most internet users aren't even aware of the amount of surveillance, limitation, and data mining done with their personal information on a daily basis. Surfshark VPN can get rid of all these problems for you with an easy to use one for all solution. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash watcher and enter promo code watcher for 83% off and three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk. The link is in the description. Now back to Are You Scared? COVID's been lonely. Right before lockdown, I moved into a new apartment, a cute 20 unit brick building closer to work. That first week, the neighbors I passed were pretty friendly. They held the door open and smiled. But once the masks went on, everyone hurried by with their heads down. Thankfully, one person did keep saying hi, a tall, dark haired guy who lived across the hall and whose name I wished I knew so I could stalk his Instagram. I was lonely, okay? Sounds like my neighbors. <laughs> what? Living next to a tall, handsome guy. <laughs> I don't talk to my neighbors. I don't. Do I think that. that's a, uh, that's apparent. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bored in my apartment, I fantasized about my various neighbors via their Wi-Fi networks. I guessed the guy across the hall was no more Mr. Wi-Fi. I was pretty sure whoever chose Bicord One picked that name in honor of cutting their cable subscription. And who was the genius who came up with the YouTube spigot? Did you enjoy any of those Wi-Fi names, by the way? They stink. Yeah, they're not great. Yeah. Hide your kids, hide your Wi-Fi is someone's in my building. I think that's pretty funny. Hey, that's funny. Mine is whatever they give you when you buy the modem. Why do you hate joy so much? I don't know. Sometimes you just want to bring a little joy into the world and have your neighbors laugh at your Wi-Fi. It stinks. Okay? Well, you know what would be funny to have one like, my neighbors are fucking lame, dash 5G. <laughs> Yeah, that's great, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Serial killer lives here, don't knock on door. <laughs> Dash 5G. <laughs> this much thought about strangers' Wi-Fi made me realize I was missing a sense of community. Before COVID, I was a soul cycle addict. The classes gave me a place to better myself, to struggle and grow with other women. By April, I could really feel its absence. I thought about getting a Peloton, the community would be digital, but it would be something. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford one. So I made do with jogging around the neighborhood. After all, running gave me more chances to bump into no more Mr. Wi-Fi in the hall and exchange our masked but friendly eye contact. How do Pelotons work? It's like a, it's like yeah, a- Yeah, you clip into it, you bike. There's like usually like a live class. There's an instructor, they talk to the class, they motivate you. It makes you feel like you're in a community or like the gym experience from home. I think I'm learning something about myself here that I don't like communities. Because this person is like, soul cycle, I loved connecting with people. I loved doing a thing together as a unit, as a group to cheer each other on. I'm gonna prove you wrong right now in one sentence. Here we go. Yeah. You know what, not even one sentence. Nay, two words, the cinema. That's, no. What? No, no, no. How is that different? 
There How is, is that different? There is zero connection there. What are you talking about? There's literally a room full of people silently participating in the silently, same thing. Silently. Yeah. Silently. Silently is even better. But I have been to some exercise classes for some bullshit BuzzFeed yeah, thing we did not, back in the day. you're not talking to each no, other no, in SoulCycle. No, but what they do is they go, come on, Shane. Yeah. You got this, Shane. Yeah, that's because you suck at I'm cycle. seeing that hustle there, so, Ryan. So what you don't like is that you suck at soul cycle, and I you don't, don't like, like being called I out in front of a group. I don't like people to acknowledge me as a human being. Unlike you, who uh, I guess hates people, I do enjoy people. I like people. I just don't like... You just hate people. I just don't like people. By the fall, however, it had started getting colder and darker earlier. I searched Craigslist in hopes of finding a used bike cheap and came across a post from a small company selling refurbished Pelotons. The company apparently takes bikes people have problems with, fix them up, and sell them for cheap. Still missing an exercise community, I shuffled some money around and pulled the trigger. The day before the bike was supposed to arrive, I realized the delivery guys would be the first ones to see the inside of my apartment. The thought snowballed and I became nervous about being alone with two strangers when I still didn't know any of my neighbors. That night, I did my hair for the first time in months and knocked on the door across the hall. His real name was Aaron, and it turned out he was the one with the YouTube spigot for a Wi-Fi network. We got the makings of a nice real uh, meet cute here. What would you say to your neighbor if you were, uh, it's COVID times, you're a young lady, you're talking to your neighbor for the first time. I'm getting a Peloton delivered uh, tomorrow, and uh, I'm a little nervous about two big guys coming in into my apartment. I'm a big guy. Yeah, yeah, that's why. What I'm... about three big guys? I gotta go, I gotta go, because- Where are you going? <laughs> I, I... <laughs> I'm gonna go, see you never, Bye. Let me know when those guys come over, I want to meet them. I'm looking for a community of big guys. Keep that was going. horrifying, holy shit. Men are scary. Yeah, that's the lesson here. He was impressed when I told him I was getting a Peloton and said he'd be happy to chill while the randos delivered it. Aaron even asked if he could give it a try when the pandemic was over. I smiled under my mask. Maybe they'll be together at the end of the story. Or maybe one of them will be in a body bag. Okay, that too. I mean, it is Are You Scared? That's are you fair. scared? That's fair. Are you scared of commitment? Oh. oh. The next day, Aaron arrived just before the delivery guys. Thankfully, they were already wearing masks. In fact, they had full ski masks on, like you'd see bank robbers wearing. One guy was big and strong, the kind of guy who looks like his job is hauling 125 pound bikes up staircases all day. The other was much smaller and did all the talking. While the bigger guy plugged in the bike and fiddled with the settings, the smaller guy chatted. These things, White hot right now, white hot. Soon as we fix one up, boom, it's sold. They're great, clip-in pedals, water bottle holders, even has a battery that charges while you bike so the darn thing works if the power goes out. He turned to Aaron. Afraid your girlfriend only got clip-in shoes for herself. Guess it's just for her. I live across the hall, we're not dating. Aaron blurted a little too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> nah, man, wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, bro, but. Have at her. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, just put the bike right there, or I don't know, or not, I don't really give a shit, don't live here, so. Don't even know her name. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna go back and watch fucking YouTube, so. <laughs> Gotta crank that spigot, you know what yeah, I'm talking you know about? I'm saying, then I'm gonna fire that Xbox Live. At this, the big man closed his eyes while the small man turned to me and squinted. Smart, ain't safe letting strangers into your apartment, he coughed. Anywho, looks like everything's all set. Enjoy your bike. With that, the smaller man left. At the door, the bigger man paused and turned back to me. He inhaled deeply through his nose and hung his head, as if he'd offended me. I thanked him for setting up the bike and he left. Weird to close your eyes. But he closed his eyes after she said, I live across the hall, we're not dating, and he responds with that. Yeah, it's odd. Maybe he was really rooting for them. Those two crazy kids. He had Tumblr fan art dialed up, now he can't post it. Oh, or, he, he shipped them. Or maybe he's like, oh, she's in danger now. Alone in my apartment, Aaron checked out the Peloton. Maybe I should get some clip-ins. We can wheel it back and forth between our apartments. 
desperate for any human interaction, my heart skipped at the thought. Like joint custody of a kid, I offered, much to my own horror. Thankfully, Aaron laughed, and before I could screw up my first real socializing in months any worse, I thanked him and saw him out. Alone again, I tried on my clip-ins. The click, click, click of the shoes as I walked around the apartment filled me with nostalgia for pre-pandemic times. I hopped on the bike, walked through the tutorials, and took my first class, led by an intimidating woman named Rachel. I'd been nervous about buying a refurbished bike, but everything seemed to work great. The instructors have a live list of how everyone's doing, and sometimes they call out your name. When Rachel said, way to go, Margo, welcome to Peloton, I almost burst into tears. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, man, dude. She just... <laughs> you need to make fun of the poor girl because she's so starved for a human connection. Oh, not we're everyone's... All, look, we're all, we've all had a tough time. You know, not everyone's a Grinch like you that wants to just sit and look at your pristine Funko Pops or whatever it is you do in I your apartment. I don't have Funko Pops except for the one that you bought me from Jurassic World, and the only reason I hang on to it, even though I hate Funko Pops, is because it was a gift from you. That's fair, I, that was a gift. And you liked it, that's why you prominently display it in your place. I threw it out. <laughs> I did. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'd finally found some semblance of community in the pandemic. The next day, work kept me online late, so I couldn't get back on the bike until 11. By then, they only had one live class available. Most classes have thumbnails of the instructor on their bike. This one, however, was different. It was an extreme close-up of a man's face, smiling maniacally straight into the camera. The class was called Bike or Die. You know what? I'm signing up for that. I would too, yeah. honestly. Like if I see this, like Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I have a Peloton and I don't and sometimes the happy thumbnails are a bit much. Well, what do you think the person is actually like threatening people in the class? Is he like, you better pick up the case or I'll fucking kill you? I would love that. Sometimes you need that, that kind of motivation. Are they allowed to do that? Yeah, I mean, bike or die with a funny thumbnail, I'm in. Deciding that sounded a little intense, I chose one of the pre-recorded classes. I missed the interaction of the live classes, but still got a good workout. The next day, I slid into my clip-ons filled up a water bottle and hopped on the bike. Something was wrong. It was only 6 p.m. There should have been plenty of live classes, but the only one available was the same bike or die. I tried to choose another pre-recorded class, but every time I selected one, a box popped up saying it was unavailable. I was afraid my refurbished bike was already broken. I went back and selected bike or die just to see if that worked. At first, everything seemed normal. Like all the other classes, Bike or Die had an instructor on a bike in a dark room, except this guy was not nearly as fit as the other teachers. In fact, it looked like it may have been his first time ever riding a bike. Even his greeting was off. Welcome back to Peloton, Margo. Let's do some biking. After only a few minutes, the instructor was clearly very winded. Sounds like me doing a Peloton class. <laughs> Could you imagine if like Peloton went on some kind of like marketing scheme to make themselves more like relatable and like they did just have like a normal guy like, all right. Oh my God, this is hard. Oh shit, dude, let's turn this resistance down a lot because my legs are burning. In fact, you know what? Let's just get off the bike, dude. I don't even want to do this anymore. Let's take a little Coca-Cola break. <laughs> Frankly, this sounds like a good class. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm following this instructor and he's like having a hard time, I'm thinking like, hey, maybe I'm not such a piece of shit. <laughs> it's just a guy like sitting on his bike, not even moving, being yeah. like, did anyone understand the final season of Lost? <laughs> Eventually, his pedaling slowed to a barely moving crawl as he hung his head between his arms. That's when I noticed his hands. Most Peloton instructors use their hands a lot. Fist pumps, thumbs up, pointing into camera. But this instructor didn't. In fact, his hands looked like they were duct taped to the handles. Confused, I slowed my cadence and eventually stopped. From out of frame, I heard a distinct cough. <coughs> the instructor's head popped up. He looked 
nervously out of frame, then into camera. Margot, I see you've stopped biking. Please start biking again. He even started slowly pedaling again, clearly struggling. I resumed pedaling slowly. The instructor whispered a pitiful, thank you. It started to dawn on me that I might be the only person logged onto this particular class. I stopped biking again and the instructor started to panic. Margo, Margo, please. Margo, you have to bike. Just keep pedaling, please. I refused. The instructor looked off camera and started really panicking. Prompted by something out of frame, the instructor yelped and closed his eyes. Margo, I'm begging you, you have to bike or he'll- The feed cut out. My screen congratulated me on finishing the workout, but I was shook. I'd be like, all right, time to towel off. That guy's donezo. <laughs> Hands duct taped to the To the handles. handles, yeah. Now that's either someone who's insanely committed to the craft or- But if he, if he was insanely committed, he'd be putting up those big gains, you know? Well, also like it'd be kind of hard to duct tape. Oh. Once you got one hand on, yeah. Oh, you're right. How do you do hard that? To, like, you have to yeah. like fucking like loop like it over it like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you, would, you would need the help of a roommate. And I feel like if I was like, hey, Shane, can you come tape me in? Tape me in. It's time for me to get some, uh, I'd do it for you. Get some sweat out here. I'd do it for you. And you're like, all right, man, I'll do this this last time, but. Yeah, I'm, after that, I'm going to need you to funnel some of that muscle tech into my goal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this guy's a goner. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been pretend. Just an extreme way to motivate people to work out. But I felt so uneasy that I needed to see how others felt about it. I googled bike or die Peloton, but couldn't find any mention of the class. I called Peloton. They said they had no idea what I was talking about. And when I mentioned I had a refurbished bike, they claimed to not provide any support for secondhand equipment and hung up. Next, I tried the company where I bought the bike from but the phone line had been disconnected. I started to suspect what I'd seen wasn't pretend after all. It was time to call the police. I tried to explain what I'd seen, that I was pretty sure someone was in trouble because of a video I saw on an exercise bike, though I had no proof and couldn't give an address or a name. The lady on the line was patient, but said there was nothing they could do. I needed proof but I was scared to get on the bike again. It took me two days to get the courage to even turn on my Peloton. I'd hoped to see a normal screen, but there it was. The only thing I could select, bike or die, with that same deranged smile. So clearly the bike is haunted. It's a haunted bike. Yeah. No ties to the company here. It seems like someone has either hacked the bike or what if this is a very crazy way to motivate people? Certainly, I could use some extra motivation. Yeah, but not to the not to the point where you like. I'm gonna keep pedaling until you die. Well, not me. That person's gonna die. But like, oh, uh, so that's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, I mean, well, like they're not gonna die if I keep pedaling, so I'm gonna keep pedaling. When are these men gonna come back? I miss the scary men. What happened to them? <laughs> I have no oh, idea. Oh, those scary men are probably aware of the situation. Detective brain. I pulled up the camera on my phone and selected it. The same bike was sitting in the same dark room, but the instructor was different. This time, it was a woman a little older than me, again with her hands taped to the bike, and it was clear she was crying. Through her tears, she said, Welcome back to Peloton, Margot. Let's do some biking. She started pedaling, but I didn't. I stood next to my bike, hands trembling as I filmed. When she noticed I wasn't biking, a worry flooded the lady's voice. Something about her eyes started to look almost familiar, like we'd met before. Please, Margot, please start pedaling. Suddenly, an arm shot in from the right side of the frame, holding a gun with a long silencer. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> I'm very subtle. There's no real like hypothesizing at that point. Like, oh, Okay, it's clear what I got to do now. Yeah. Clip in and start biking. Clip in! You can't call the police, so really all you got to do is like, fuck, all right. All right. <laughs> the instructor screamed as the silencer tapped the side of her neck. For the love of God, Margo. <laughs> God damn it, Margo. <laughs> Come on! I panicked. I didn't even have my clip-ins on. As I hoisted myself onto the bike to start pedaling, my hand slipped dropping my phone onto the hard metal base of the peloton. 
I tried to keep pedaling while reaching for my phone, but it was too far. I hopped off the bike to grab it, and a helpless gasp escaped my mouth. My phone was shattered. Suddenly, a shrill pew. The person with the gun shot the woman through the throat. Holy shit! It's very immersive. I'd be, you know, I'd be upset. You know what the best part about a silencer is? Not huh. even the sound. Is it the screwing? Yeah, yeah you know we got I mean? it, yeah, yeah. Time to go to the police station. And look, we're having fun here about a lady getting shot in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> but this is baloney times. This is, yeah, it's just a tall tale. This is high baloney. A sickening gurgling came from the screen as the instructor thrashed about, hands stuck to the bike, her last moments alive, a dance of pure agony. Fighting the urge to vomit, I unplugged the bike, but the screen remained on. The bike had switched to battery power, and someone off screen tilted the camera forward so all I could see was the ground, the pedals, and a stream of blood dripping down onto the instructor's lifeless feet. I was drenched in a cold sweat and beginning to hyperventilate. I couldn't fully process what I'd just witnessed. All I knew was I needed the video to stop. I dove across the room to my router and unplugged it. I returned to the bike, but the live feed was still going. Another set of feet was walking around and by the sound coming from the bike, they were untaping the instructor's hands. I scratched at the screen, trying to pull up the settings menu. I found the Wi-Fi box and selected it. My Wi-Fi network wasn't there. Instead, it was one of my neighbors, Bicord One. Except, not quite. I'd misread it. Biker die, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a one, but a capital I. Bicord I bike or die. I needed the police and my phone was busted, but Aaron was across the hall. I dashed out of my apartment and started banging on the door. No answer. I moved on to his neighbor, but again, no answer. I screamed, trying door after door, but it seemed I was the only person home. How? It was still a pandemic. As I pounded for help on the apartment doors, I tried to remember the last time I'd seen anyone in the halls. A few days? Since I'd gotten the bike delivered? Was that unusual? I hammered on the door at the end of the hall, and to my surprise, it was already open. Inside on the ground were a dozen people, tied up and with hoods over their heads and clip-in bike shoes on their feet. <laughs> What? It's just a funny image. I don't know what the little clip-in bike shoes look, they look like, but look ridiculous. <laughs> okay, good. And you do walk around with a little click clack, click clack, <laughs> click clack. I tore the hood off the closest person, and I recognized the friendly eyes immediately. It was Aaron, bleeding from his nose with a gag in his mouth. I'd found my neighbors. By now, tears were pouring down my face. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I yelped trying to untie Aaron's duct-taped hands from behind his back. It was taking forever. They were bound too tight. Same with the gag in his mouth. I needed something to cut the tape. I need a knife or a phone, I yelled as I failed to tear Aaron's binds. One of the other hooded people stuck their foot out, pointing with their shoe to the next room. <laughs> or what if you'd like to get their attention? I lunged into the room the person had indicated as two things dawned on me. First, the foot that pointed wasn't wearing a clip-in shoe like everyone else. Second, I recognized this other room. It had a camera on a tripod, an exercise bike, and a pool of blood that trailed back into the room I'd just been. I looked around for a knife, scissors, a phone, anything to help but there was nothing. Suddenly, I was no longer alone. I turned and saw standing in the doorway the shoe that had pointed to this room. It was the shoe I'd seen removing the instructor from the bike. I followed the legs up to see a stranger holding the hood he had been wearing in the other room. He pointed at the bike in the room. Those things, he said in a familiar voice, are white hot right now. 
white hot. He's back. Short guy's back. You wanted yes, him back. back. There he is. He's back. <laughs> I gotta imagine when the person takes off their mask, not a good sign for you. Also, a lot of forethought on that person's part. Oh, somebody's coming. I guess I'll. That's pretty. Yeah, put the hood on. And, That's quick. And cuddle with my buttons. I mean, I don't want to like give this guy like kudos, but. I give him kudos. I'll give him under the table kudos. I'll give I him, mean, I'll if give he's him able to rig kudos. up this whole network and hack these bikes and turn this building into his own little uh, murder palace. That's fair. Good for him. I, I, hey, let me say this too. Can I say this? Yes, you can. You listen in here? I'm listening. Okay. This guy is obviously a piece of shit, but you know who's a bigger piece of shit? Aaron. No, no, no. Oh. No, the, the big guy. The big guy, because he's complicit. Because he's complicit, but he clearly knows it's wrong. Yeah. And he's not doing anything. Oh. This guy's out of his mind, obviously. But the big guy... He, the big guy. He should be doing something. He's big. Yeah. He used those big muscles for something other than lifting these murder bikes. Agreed. He was the short man who had delivered the bike. Please, I gasped. He rushed towards me and threw the hood over my head. I tried to fight back, but he wrestled me to the ground and quickly taped my hands and legs. I heard him move to the bike and tap on the screen. He hoisted me up and taped my hands to the handlebars. Then he pulled off my hood. I blinked against the harsh light and slowly began to make out a cue card held by the man who had tied me up next to the camera with a blinking red light. With a silenced pistol, the man tapped on the cue card. I gulped and read aloud. Welcome back to Peloton, Katie. Let's do some biking. So. Are you scared? Eat your heart out, Black Mirror. <laughs> this is why I don't exercise. This is this is why you don't be healthy out there, folks. No. This would be a lesson to you. Yeah, you know, eat some celery. Yeah. Go on a walk. I mean, we all got a limited amount of time on this rock. Uh-huh. Might as well just fucking eat some Cheetos and call it a day. You yes. know what I'm saying? And don't get other people killed. Yeah. I liked it. Wait, what? I liked it, the story. Oh, oh, I thought you were like, I like what this guy was doing. I Look, I, oh, I don't condone murder. It sure sounds but like But this guy really had to put up some sort of infrastructure to make uh, this function. You know, I, like, yeah. a, a, like a Google Doc that people were working oh, off yeah. of. You know? Well, this story was also written by Garrett Warner, who wrote uh, the first story that, of this season. Guy yeah. sounds like he's cracked. A sick brain. We've got to uncoil him a couple times <laughs> to the opposite <laughs> yeah, side. You know yeah, what I mean? wound a little too tight. Uh, as we all have been. We'll see you next time on Are You Scared? Sleep tight. Don't forget to hydrate.